Hello, this is Space Daily News with Julia. In the early days of the space age, the Apollo astronauts took part in a visionary plan – bring samples of the lunar surface material, known as regolith, back to Earth, where they could be studied with the state-of-the-art equipment and safe for future research not yet imagined. Fifty years later, at the dawn of the Artemis area and the next astronaut returned to the Moon, three of those samples have been used to successfully grow plants. For the first time ever, researchers have grown the hardly and well-studied Arabidopsis telenia in the lunar regolith. Scientists at the University of Florida have made a breakthrough discovery that could both enable space exploration and benefit humanity, showing that plants can grow in lunar regolith. They weren't as robust as plants grown in Earth soil, or even as those in the control group grown in a lunar simulant made from volcanic ash, but they did indeed grow. And by studying how the plants responded in the lunar samples, the team hopes to find the way for future astronauts to someday grow more nutrient-rich plants on the Moon. Arabidopsis teliana, native to Eurasia and Africa, is a relative of broccoli, cauliflower and Brussels sprout. And due to its small size and easier growth, it's one of the most studied plants in the world. Scientists already know how it behaves in different circumstances, even how it grows in space. To grow the Arabidopsis, the team used samples collected on the Apollo 11, 12 and 17 missions, with only a gram of regolith allotted for each plant. The team added water and then seeds to the samples. They then put the trays into terrarium boxes in a clean room. A nutrient solution was added daily, and after two days they started to sprout. But after day six, however, it was clear that the plants were not as robust as the control group plants grown in volcanic ash and the plants were grown differently depending on which type of sample they were in. The plants grew more slowly and had stunted roots, additionally some had stunted leaves. After 20 days the team harvested the plants, ground them up and studied the RNA, which showed that the plants were indeed under stress. Additionally, the plants reacted differently depending on which sample each collected from different areas on the moon was used. Plants grown in the Apollo 11 samples were not as robust as the other two set. Nonetheless, the plants did grow. This research opened the door not only to someday grown plants in habitats on the moon, but to a wide range of additional questions. How can we reduce the stressful nature of lunar soil? Are materials from different areas of the moon more conducive to grown plants than others? Could studying lunar regoliths help us understand more about the Mars regolith and potentially grown plants in that materials as well? All of these are questions that the team hopes to study next in support of the future astronauts traveling to the Moon. If you want to listen more space news, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Bye-bye!